bicep implants, abdominal etching, forehead lift, cleft chin, liposuction. Those are just a few of the extreme ways Steve has gone to be perfect. I've had a facelift, a forehead lift, pec implants, bicep implants, abdominal etching, liposuction. The first time I considered cosmetic surgery, I sought out a plastic surgeon named Dr. Stephen Hoffman, who at the time was very famous for doing Michael Jackson. The first round of surgeries, I only wanted one, but I ended up with six. I not only had a chin implant, but I had the cleft done. At the same time, Michael Jackson was considering having his chin done. I was basically the guinea pig for Michael Jackson's signature chin. When it comes to my face and my body, I'm a perfectionist. Perfectionists are never happy. I'm really talented at picking out faults and correcting them. I went back to Dr. Hofflin and I said, Dr. Hofflin, do you think I need anything else? He said, Steve, you look great. Come back and see me in 10 years. I found a plastic surgeon, Dr. Nicholas Chugay, who was pioneering muscle implants. So I said, yeah, I think that's what I want. The bicep implant. It's a solid silicone implant slid up and held in place underneath the fascia tissue. Pec implants are a solid sheet of silicone. They're folded in half like a taco and they're slid in the chest area. I think my 50th surgery, I will probably break the Guinness Book of World Records, have a big television special and documentary I mean, it'll be a nice blowout celebration. Okay. Um, so you've had 47 things done. Yes. How do you think you look? I'm happy with my looks right now. Okay. For my age. So why have anything else done? Um, well, after 47 surgeries, there's not much more left to do. But um, if I need something, I'll have some maintenance. Yeah, well, I, I made a list of the things that, that you've had done, which mm -hmm. I, I thought was a, an astounding list. You've had two nose jobs, nostrils narrowed, chin implant, cleft done, liposuction under cheekbones, three liposuctions under chin, three forehead lifts, uh, coronal lift, mm -hmm. face lift, and feather lift, which is kind of a face lift, mm -hmm. upper and lower eyelids each done twice, bicep implants, pec implants, liposuction stomach, love handles, under the buttocks, two hair transplants, abdominal action, dental implants, lip injections, facial tattoos. Where are the facial tattoos? Eyeliner, lips, and Oh, eyebrows. okay. Got you. Three chemical peels, Botox, and Restylane. Mm -hmm. When do you work? <laughs> <laughs> Don't, I mean, you get a that. lot of recovery time? The worst would maybe be about three weeks. We have a picture of you before, uh, and then a, a, a picture of you now. I was 20 years old. Did you look better when you were 20? Not much. <laughs> uh, I was a, I was a good-looking young man. It's not that I needed a lot of surgery. It's just. Um, do you think you look operated now? Do I you think you look natural, or do you think you look? Surgery? I've never wanted to look natural. Ever. So you want to look? You you want people to walk by you and go. Whoa. Well, I don't know. I just always wanted keen features. That's why I sought out my first plastic surgeon, Dr. Hofflin. Okay, well, there, well, there are some, there are different theories about somebody, why somebody would do this. One is you could have body dysmorphic disorder, mm -hmm. which means you're, you're just not ever satisfied with anything because you have a distorted view, a distorted perception mm -hmm. of your body. So you could have body dysmorphic disorder, or you could just be an attention whore. Mm -hmm. Or you could be addicted to surgery. Mm -hmm. The actual process. I'm, of, I'm of actually being... not an attention whore. I'm actually very low profile. Well, the reason that would be on the list is because you said your 50th surgery is going to be a huge spectacle and you're going to blow it out and it's going to, everybody's going to know and it's going to all be there, mm -hmm. which suggests to me that attention does have some value for you. It, well, it does have value business wise. Yes. Well, you're very successful in your business long ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you do hair products and... Hollywood Secrets Hair Care. Yeah. <laughs> you're very successful at what you do. So why, why do you need this? It extends your career. My career may have been over 20 years ago. Okay, well, like, let's look at this picture. I mean, this, this is a posed picture 
that you took, and was this after the, the PEC implants? I think this was in 1997, which was... Well, clearly you've had the PEC implants. Yeah, yeah. Were you satisfied when you took that picture? Uh, there's some good attributes in the picture. When you took that picture, makeup, lights, hair, mm -hmm. professional photographer, you're saying still not there. I hate taking pictures. I hate them. Because? Um... I just don't like drawing that much attention to myself, like photographically. I just hate it. Okay, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk to Steve's doctor and meet his friend who is pleading with him to stop going under the knife. We'll be right back. Project Husband is my journey to find my soulmate. I mean, Project Husband is a project? I think Lisa is living in a delusional world, and unfortunately, the guy hasn't shown up yet. Okay, well, I'm back with Steve, who has undergone 47 cosmetic procedures, says he's going to do more, and that number 50 is going to be a huge blowout. Now, Dr. Nicholas Shugay has been working on Steve for 20 years, and he has performed 42 of his cosmetic procedures. Doctor, thank you for, for being here. Is he a good candidate for surgery at this point? He's had pretty much everything done. Uh, was there ever a time that, that you thought he might have a, a body dysmorphic disorder and therefore was psychologically seeking something that couldn't be provided physically? There was not that dislike of himself or wanting to completely change. Or, and so I think he, there is no more body dysmorphic syndrome in the situation. It's more just narcissistic kind of tendency. I've done evaluations for cosmetic surgery back during the time that I was practicing, and that would be a clear don't do it sign if that was the case. Well, I think most of our, us are narcissistic, especially in the society. There's an element of that. And if it makes a person feel better or look better, I think it's fine. When you look at Steve, he clearly doesn't have a natural look. And you say you don't want a natural look, Never. right? Not from day so, one. So, I mean, he, he, he clearly has a, a, a surgery look, correct? That's correct. Uh, it's like a haircut. Everybody likes a different haircut. Are you desperate to look young? Um, I don't like looking old. Put it that way. I don't like lines. I don't like wrinkles. I love me at my age now. I love my, me when I was 20. I loved myself when I was 30. Yeah. How, how old are you now? 29 plus. 29 plus. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Jay Calvert is here. He has never performed any surgery on Steve, and he mm -hmm. prefers to work with people who want a more natural look. So what do you think of Steve's look, Dr. Calvert? Well, I think it's a very interesting choice. Uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a done look, which is, you know, and for being done, it's, a, it's the look that he wants. Isn't there a mm -hmm. point at which scar tissue can get to the point that it keeps people from being able to have natural expressions. Are you ever concerned about that, Dr. Shugay? That well, I, I try to be very careful and cautious whenever we do things. And there are repeat procedures on patients that may need to do reconstruction, etc. There's a lot of scar. And so you just work with that and be extremely cautious with that. Now, Kate has been friends with Steve for 20 years, and she says she wants him to stop what she calls an obsession with trying to achieve perfection. You, you're concerned he's done too much, Kate. There's so many reasons to be concerned. He's gone under anesthesia 47 times. What about the, you know, chance of infection? Also, you've got psychological effects, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's become an ongoing joke with us. I've worked with her for 18 years. She's also the star of The Young and the Restless, a soap opera. So um, it's like I go to her house and she's like, but why? Why? You don't need it. I mean, he's come to my house. He's had lipo and he's been in pain and has been there three days later. And we can barely move trying to do my hair and makeup. I'm going, what? What are you doing? If you could not get surgery again, if just all of a sudden there wasn't a doctor on the face of the earth that mm -hmm. would touch you. 
Would you be okay? Um, I wouldn't be okay, but I'd find other ways like facials and maybe peels, something less invasive. I'd make it work. If you knew before you got that first surgery what you now know to be true, 47 procedures, not all surgeries, but 47 procedures later, mm -hmm. would, would you still have gone down this path? Um, some things work, some things don't. Some things I would have changed. I was a pioneer with some surgeries and, you know, the first person for like biceps and pec implants. If Steve presents to you for surgical procedures, like he wants to do 50 and have a big uh, spectacle blowout, will you do additional surgeries on The Guinness you? Book of World Records. <laughs> well, he's had the facelift. How many years ago was that, Steve? I think it was eight years ago. Eight years ago. So usually a facelift lasts about seven to ten years. If he came to me next year or whatever, so okay, that's about nine years down the line on a facelift. We could give you another facelift. So you would operate on him again? I would, because I only did one facelift on him so far. A good facelift that's done well can, can easily last 8, 10, 15 years, especially with the new endoscopic techniques. It's not good to keep having plastic surgery over time. Mm -hmm. It really does take its toll. It can make you look a lot older. Because there are people that they, they go just one step too far and it gets really yeah, bad. Yeah, I'm aware of that. We'll pay attention and, and see this 50 Guinness Book of World Records <laughs> uh, spectacle. So right. uh, I appreciate you talking about this. Every girl dreams of a fairy tale wedding. This bride is no different. But wait, something very important is missing. We'll be right back.